Hello, my name is Dr. John Raymond. I'm the president of the Medical College of Wisconsin. Today's commencement ceremony is unlike any other in the almost 130 year history of MCW. The shared threat of the COVID-19 pandemic has echoed throughout the world and forced us to learn, work, and live differently. To our graduating Master of Science in Anesthesia students, I thank you for your flexibility, maturity, and resilience. We're proud of your responses to the unprecedented challenges brought on by this pandemic and the disruption of your studies. Thank you for your leadership, empathy, and trust in science. Thank you for being champions of rationality and for being caring and supportive of your colleagues and your patients throughout your education especially over these last nine months. And thanks also to those who've supported our graduates during this time by connecting with them with love, grace, and equanimity. To all of the parents, significant others, spouses, children, friends, and loved ones, we're deeply grateful. To our graduates, the COVID-19 pandemic has prepared you well to meet the challenges of healthcare, science, and leadership Today is the day that you will achieve a milestone and take the next steps in your lives and careers of service. Thank you. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, permit me to extend our sincere congratulations to each and every graduate. We take great pleasure and great pride in your singular accomplishment. As you commence your new beginnings, we salute you and wish you well. We are confident you are well prepared to meaningfully engage in the service of others. And so we wish you every success in this next phase in life's journey. Congratulations and very best wishes to you. Hello, class of 2020. I'm just sending you some well wishes. I'm so proud of all of you and have been so privileged to be part of your journey through the MSA program since before you even started the program as applicants. I remember your interview days and all those exams you took as first years. Please know that I love all of you and hope that you stay in touch after graduation. Send me a message or a phone call, stop by and grab some candy. Like I said, I'm so proud of all of you and congratulations. Class of 2020, can you believe this day is finally here? Commencement is a time to celebrate your success, but also to reflect back on all the hard work you put in. Over the last two and a half years, I have had the pleasure of watching you transform from aspiring and enthusiastic students into anesthesia professionals. Now, I could go on and on about how wonderful you are and your great accomplishments, but I thought it'd be nice to hear it from some of your clinical instructors. Let's see what some of them had to say. Simi, love having her, does a great job managing difficult patients. Morgan, proactive and patient care, we can use an anesthetist just like her. Justin, top-notch knowledge, great rapport with surgeons and anesthesiologists and patients. Haley, capable and enthusiastic, will be a great asset to the anesthesia care team. Evie is amazing. She'll do great things in Florida. Dallin was a pleasure to work with, professional and knowledgeable. Nicole, pleasure to work with, ready to resolve any intraoperative issues. Tommy, helpful and teamwork oriented. Matt, ready to practice on his own. Gabe, he's ready to graduate. I'm impressed, knowledgeable and independent. Lance, helpful and prepared was an asset to the team. Maria, excellent, ready for practice. Sarah responded quickly and appropriately to challenging and unexpected situations. You're definitely ready. Now to everyone watching today, graduates, friends, and family, you can tell that this is a really talented group of anesthesia providers. I wish you all much success in your career as certified anesthesiologist assistants, and I'm glad we were able to be a part of your journey. Today, I'm extremely proud to call each and every one of you my colleagues. Congratulations. Class of 2020, it has been a pleasure getting to know you over these past two years. I have seen you grow from eager first year students to confident seniors. I know you will do wonderful things in your careers and be amazing CAAs. Happy graduation. Hello, class of 2020. Congratulations, you made it. 
I am amazed at the grace you all displayed while completing these final months of training during a pandemic. This has truly been a unique final year, and I wish we could all be to together to celebrate your journey. I'm very proud to now be able to call you all my colleagues, and I hope to see you all in person in the future and hear about your new careers. Congratulations again. To our 2020 Master of Science and Anesthesia graduates, we are extremely proud of your many achievements. You are our very best. MCW and our faculty are pleased to have had a part in your education and wish you all the best in the next phase of your journeys. We are grateful for you and for what you will do in the future and know you will bring much pride to your alma mater. As graduates, you will always be part of the MCW family. So please stay in touch and let us know frequently about all you are doing. Thank you, Dr. Connolly, Professor Stout, and the class of 2020 for allowing me the privilege of sharing a few words this afternoon. First, congratulations to every one of you. Graduating from a rigorous and challenging program such as this one is a testament to your focus, your dedication, and your hard work. Doing so during the most disruptive year in the history of American healthcare makes your achievement even more remarkable. And I'm confident that each of you have family, friends, and teachers who have supported and cheered for you along the way. Be sure to tell them thank you as often as possible. I suspect many of you are both excited and anxious today. I still remember that feeling as my wife, young daughter, and I left Philadelphia for the foreign land of South Carolina almost 30 years ago. New faces, new places, mortgage, family, learning about your new practice and colleagues, putting into practice with a new level of responsibility all the things you have learned over the past two plus years. Like you, my focus that first year was to provide great clinical care and ensure patient safety in every case. No doubt you will spend the next year doing the same as you acclimate to new surroundings, learn who and where and what, and get comfortable with your new practice. But let's look beyond the first year or two and ask a question. What if you also start to view your career path not just with a microscope but with a telescope? What are your long-term goals? How will you match your long-term goals to your values? Well, in medical school and residency, I really did not have a clue, so to say. I had neither a master plan nor a talent for introspection. It was enough to struggle with daily tasks, stay ahead of the learning curve, and make sure I made as few mistakes as possible. Never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined leading within a state or national anesthesia society, serving as chief clinical officer of a large national anesthesia company, or even just giving a graduation speech. Yet I've been fortunate to have opportunities over my career to evolve into challenging roles, learn new skills, and develop cherished relationships with colleagues, many of whom are good friends. I feel so lucky. But quoting the line from the old Talking Heads hit, Once in a Lifetime, I ask myself, how did I get here? I think about that question a lot. As certified anesthesiologist assistants, you all have a valuable and important skill set that contributes not only to safe patient care in the operating rooms, but more broadly as professionals, you also have the capability to help design how anesthesia care is valued, administered, and led throughout this country. For the next few minutes, I'd like to share some perspectives on the opportunities that exist not only to be excellent clinicians, but also to contribute to healthcare in ways you might never envision. What are the behaviors and mindsets that allow you to create a lifelong career that will be fulfilling for you, charitable for others, and in the end, allow you to say, I did everything I could. First, build meaningful relationships and be curious about what others do. Healthcare is a team sport and none of us work in a vacuum. Hospitalized patients see an average of 18 professionals during a single hospitalization. With the advent of the team approach to both anesthesia and hospital care, it can be unclear to them who is a doctor, a nurse, a tech, or a physician's assistant. And that does not account for the many administrative professionals in finance, human resources, supply chain, custodial services, nutrition support, who also touch a patient's path. Never ever underestimate the power of an office scheduler. As CAAs, you truly have the ability to improve clinical outcomes, clinical operations, and patient experience, but only if you understand how your work is related to that of others in the healthcare ecosystem. Let me tell you a story that illustrates that point. Many years ago, a young anesthesiologist, about five years into his first practice, was appointed by his group and hospital leadership as the first professional director in the department. 
He had a strong track record of leading clinical projects and a reputation as a reliable and capable clinician, the kind of anesthesiologist others would ask for help. In this new position, he was tasked with finding common ground between the hospital and practice and identifying opportunities for alignment. 18 months later, however, his position was eliminated by joint decision of the group in the hospital. What happened? The anesthesiologist, while well-intentioned and intelligent, really did not understand the many individuals who had responsibilities related to a patient's care. He really had little experience or training in communication, team building, or project management. While he had solid professional relationships with his colleagues, he did not understand the motivations and interests of all the stakeholders who affect care of a surgical patient. He was unable to identify opportunities and incapable of building consensus across key stakeholders. How do I know this story? Because the anesthesiologist was me. Over time, I started to recognize this failure, however, as an aha moment, an instance that transformed how I approach relationships at work. It prompted me to learn about teamwork and to become a more effective communicator by asking questions and listening. Take a few minutes each day to meet someone new at work, find out what is important to him or her, and start to build a relationship based not upon reputation or title, but upon trust and shared experiences. Even in Wisconsin, CAAs still are a relatively unknown type of healthcare clinician. Each of you has an obligation and an opportunity to reach out to others. Tell them about your education, your training, and your key role in anesthesia care. And always ask, how can I help? Those are the interactions that build relationships that sustain a career and over time lead to professional opportunities. Which brings me to a second recommendation. You are more likely to build a satisfying career if you understand that your roles and responsibilities extend far beyond giving anesthesia. Our ability to demonstrate value as anesthesiologists and anesthetists depends upon so much more than just the administration of anesthesia. Anesthesiology as a profession is facing some of the greatest threats in its history. Declining payment from both federal and commercial payers, erosion of scope of practice laws that protect patients, disruptive technology that will redefine the roles of anesthesiologists and anesthetists. As a CCO, the most, second most common question I get from administrators is, what value can your group bring to our organization? If the answer is just that we provide safe anesthesia care and nothing else, then we are selling ourselves short and at risk of turning anesthesia into a commodity based solely upon cost. If you keep your eyes and ears open, there are plenty of opportunities to engage in both hospital-based and society-based activities. Early in my career, I had been active on hospital committees, but had little interest in broader outside issues impacting our specialty. One day, while getting ready to leave the hospital after a long call night, the head of my practice, Dr. Chris Yakel, suggested I spend part of that day at the South Carolina State House with Margarita Pate the State Society's Legislative Director, who planned to be at the Capitol that day speaking with legislators. While I rather would have spent the morning in bed, I met a couple hours later with Margarita and watched her trade comments with legislators. Being new to these conversations after a while, I asked her, what exactly are we trying to do here? With a slight smile, she pointed to a lobbyist on the other side of the rotunda and stated, if we do not tell our story to the legislators, she will. The other lobbyist worked for a professional organization that, at the time, did not support fair, fair payment for anesthesiology services. That encounter was my second aha moment, the aha moment that planted a seed for a lifelong side career in the, both the Wisconsin Society of Anesthesiologists and the American Society of Anesthesiologists. That encounter led me two years later upon relocation to Wisconsin to volunteer with the WSA with the support of another mentor, Dr. Rob Coburn. That involvement in turn led to the opportunity to lead our joint efforts to establish licensure for CAs in Wisconsin and to my personal increasing involvement with the ASA. And perhaps most importantly, I'm thankful that to this day, both Chris and Rob remain good friends and colleagues who have given me sound advice many times over the years. That chance encounter in the South Carolina State House enriched my career in ways I never would have imagined. And I have no doubt that if I had gone home to bed that day, my career path would have turned out very differently. My strong conviction is that every member of an anesthesia practice should contribute in at least one way outside of his or her clinical duties. As a CAA, what opportunities exist for you, even in your first or second year of practice, to demonstrate value, 
both within your practices and as part of a larger community. You can participate in hospital and facility committee work. You can develop expertise in a facet of anesthesia care, something not only clinical, but perhaps something related to quality, safety, finance, information technology, or operating room operations. You can help implement a clinical, operational, or regulatory policy at your facility. Support student education in both the classroom and the operating rooms. You can advocate in legislative and regulatory arenas, both at the state and federal levels. You can participate in National Society governance or education programs. Now, each of your situations is unique, and it is inevitable that some of you will take on more of this side work than others due to different interests and different demands on your time. But even if you cannot lead at the point of the spear, support those who are doing so. Be a member of your professional society and contribute to its political action committee. Don't be that person who quietly leaves at the end of the day when all your work is done, when your cases are done. Instead, find out what else is needed. Support that colleague who has a three o'clock meeting or a three o'clock lecture to give. Recognize their contribution and offer to support her by staying for an extra hour. You all have so much to contribute outside of the operating rooms and it will enrich your careers to do so. Be open to opportunities to broaden your horizons. Start to think about what interests you and take time to develop some expertise in an area that excites you. Over time, those small steps will multiply and enrich your career. You won't regret it. My third point today, don't be afraid to embrace change. Have the courage to lead change. When I speak of failure, I'm not referring to clinical work. All of you are well-trained in both didactic and hands-on anesthesia skills. If you're failing in clinical work on a regular basis, that's a different problem that can be addressed with additional training or proctored supervision. What I'm talking about here is unwillingness to take on challenges for fear of failure. Consider the following quote from Franklin Roosevelt. Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the assessment that something else is more important than fear. What could be more important than fear? In 2007, Ben Yoder, then a CAA at the University of Wisconsin, asked the WSA board if it would support working toward licensure of CAAs in Wisconsin. As a relatively new member of the board and as its president-elect, I knew that this project would fall to me. I also at the time did not even know what a CAA was. Our board agreed to take on the project. Honestly, I was fearful of leading it, primarily because I knew so little about your, the subject. Some of our board members also were afraid we would fail, primarily due to our limited capabilities. WSA had few relationships in the state legislature. Our longtime lobbyist was about to retire and we had a whopping $13,000 in our state political action fund from a society with over 500 members. The prior year, we had failed to pass legislation related to standards around office-based anesthesia. So why would we take on this task and how did we as a group overcome our fear? We were able to overcome our fear because we knew that the goal would benefit our specialty by creating more access to anesthesia care for the citizens of Wisconsin. We spent the better part of a year researching issues around CAA licensure, speaking with experienced CAAs, anesthesiologists, and with leadership of other states that had been successful in this effort. We hired a new lobbyist who provided a fresh perspective on strategic options, and we quietly cajoled support from across the state from anesthesiologists, medical specialties, and other legislators. Over the better part of a year, we convinced ourselves to overcome our fear and act on a well thought out plan that would change the anesthesia workforce in our, in our state. And while our initial attempt in 2010 failed, we had laid the groundwork to come back in 2012 and ultimately were successful gaining licensure for CAAs in Wisconsin. You have to start with courage. As Winston Churchill stated, courage is rightly esteemed the first of human qualities because it is the quality which guarantees all others. Passing legislation is not the only way to demonstrate courage. What are some common situations in which you may need to show courage when necessary to meet a larger goal? Perhaps having a difficult conversation with a surgeon or anesthesiologist about what is appropriate care in order to ensure safe patient care. Participating in a peer review or root cause analysis meeting after a bad patient outcome in order to help a colleague get feedback that will improve his performance attending a political fundraiser for a candidate whom you do not support personally in order to support a larger cause related to anesthesia. 
or asking someone for forgiveness after you have wrongly accused them of a mistake in order to restore a good relationship built upon trust. As you confront challenging situations in your career, as an individual in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, or as part of a larger group advocating for change, at some point you'll feel fearful. Over the coming years, fine tune your internal compass and develop a reserve of courage that you can draw upon when needed to accomplish a larger goal. Lastly, I'd like to discuss advocacy and its role in your career. For the prior three topics, I've suggested you consider your career in terms of things you can do to expand your horizons, take on new challenges, and overcome fear. Regarding advocacy, however, let's start by focusing on our most important purpose, the patient. In his inaugural address in 2004, ASA President Roger Littweiler stated, quote, it's all about the patient because we have no other reason to exist, unquote. Advocacy is not complicated. Most of us think about advocacy in terms of legislative activity, testifying in the legislature, putting up a yard sign, or attending a fundraiser. But if you think about it, advocacy is any process to inform and influence decision makers about your point of view. Advocacy does occur in Washington, D.C. and in Madison, but it takes place more often every day at your workplace. Every day you have an opportunity to advocate locally on behalf of your specialty and your patients through conversations with patients about your role in helping them through the operation, through availability for that extra case in the afternoon, through work upon facility policies related to patient safety, through your expertise in clinical quality and sharing it with others, through helping a facility create a more efficient schedule or implement an electronic health record. When you participate in these activities on behalf of patients, you create a purpose in your career that is meaningful, lasting, and satisfying. You create purpose that reduces your chances of stress and burnout and create value both for yourself and for the patient. Talk about a win-win. Thank you for your time on this special day. I cannot state enough what an honor it is to share it with you, even in a virtual world. I wanna conclude by paraphrasing some comments made by Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon, at a commencement ceremony almost a decade ago. Tomorrow, in a very real sense, your career the career you author from scratch on your own begins. How will you use your gifts? What choices will you make? Will inertia be your guide or will you follow your passions? Will you follow dogma or will you be original? Will you choose a career of ease or a career of service and adventure? Will you wilt under criticism or will you follow your convictions? Will you bluff it out when you're wrong or will you apologize? When it's tough, will you give up or will you be relentless? Will you be a cynic or will you be a builder? Will you be clever at the expense of others or will you be kind? In the end, we are our choices. Build yourself a great story. Thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Mesrobian. I want to extend a special welcome to all of you. As Dr. Kirshner mentioned, we recognize the challenges you've faced over the past nine months been a very difficult time. The COVID-19 pandemic has challenged all of us to rise up and to do better. Despite all that, we're grateful for your support, your leadership, your patience, and for the wonderful example you've set for those who are following your footsteps here at MCW. Like your family, your friends, your other loved ones, we're very proud of you. We're proud that you've decided to dedicate your lives and your careers to providing better health care to individuals and to the communities that you'll serve. We're confident that you'll use your skills, compassion, integrity, and your patience to provide excellent care as you practice medicine throughout your career. So congratulations, MCW Class of 2020. I now present to you the candidates for the degree Master of Science in Anesthesia. Simi Kayamali Barwani. Morgan Michelle Brown. Justin M. Cole. Haley K. Coleman. Eveline M. Foitz. Dallin McKay Johnson. Nicole Marion Kowalski. Tommy H. Quach. Matthew Rakowski.
Gabriel J. Surges. Lance M. Troutman. Maria M. Zavi. Sarah Marie Zumanovic. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. We look forward to following your success as you move through your careers. As president of the Medical College of Wisconsin, by the authority delegated to me by our Board of Trustees, I confer upon our graduates the degree of Master of Science in Anesthesia and pronounce you graduates of the Medical College of Wisconsin. Congratulations. Hello, it's so nice to be with you today. I'm Matt Goldblatt, president of the MCW and Marquette Medical Alumni Association. I graduated from MCW in 1997 and completed my residency in 2004. I've been on the faculty here since 2009. Thank you so much for including me in the Alumni Association in this ceremony. And congratulations to this year's graduating Master of Science in Anesthesia class. First and foremost, we are truly excited to welcome you as a distinct group of alumni to our broader community. The growth and expansion of MCW has been exciting to witness for me as both an alumnus and faculty member here. And your success in this program and in your career will only further raise the profile of this tremendous institution. Second, you have been fortunate to receive your education and training at an institution that not only teaches you the latest methods, treatments, and standards of care, but develops them. At the core of MCW's mission is educating and training skilled doctors, scientists, pharmacists, and healthcare professionals who are prepared to meet the ever-changing needs of the communities they serve. You now possess an innate sense of innovation to advance knowledge and educate others, and I urge you to use it to its fullest potential. And lastly, we hope you will stay connected and maintain a strong relationship with each other and with MCW in whatever capacity you can. I hope that as MCW students, you are active in, on Engage, our own online alumni platform. But it is my hope that you will become even more active as Master of Science and Anesthesia alumni. Students beginning the program will need to connect with alumni like you. Please take the time to register on Engage so you can lead with mentoring and learning opportunities for our MSA students. You have incredible potential to give back or pay it forward with your individual and collective time, talents, and resources, and we'll hope you choose to direct at least some of them at your alma mater. You may be members of a small graduating class, but remember that you are joining a group of alumni that number well into the thousands. In conclusion, I wish you all the best in what I'm sure will be exciting and fulfilling careers as not only health healthcare providers, but leaders. Hello, MSA class of 2020. I just wanted to say that it has been a great privilege to get to know each and every one of you over these past few years. I know that every one of you is a great provider and you're so ready to take this next step. Congratulations to everybody on all of your accomplishments and I cannot wait to see what all of you do next. Keep in touch. Dear class of 2020, over two years ago, we met each other as fellow students in the MSA program, and it's been incredible to watch each of you grow into the graduates you become today. No other class has had to overcome the challenges that you guys have faced in the last 29 months, and I am both excited and extremely privileged to call you colleagues and fellow alumni. Congratulations. What a special event to be able to celebrate in such a difficult year. You and your family should be extremely proud of what you've been able to accomplish, and I, I certainly know that we are. I wish you all the very best, and you have my most sincere congratulations. Stay safe and enjoy this well-deserved day of celebration. Congratulations to the class of 2020. I am Lois Connolly, the Medical Director of the Medical College of Wisconsin Master of Science and Anesthesia Program. I heartily welcome you graduates to our anesthesia care team as anesthesiologist assistants. As medical director of your program, I first met you during your interviews to the program. I am fortunate to observe and assist in the transformation from an early learning student to the professional you are today. I have the honor of overseeing the program, working with your program team, Abby, Emma, and Dan, side by side with your program director, Mike Stout, and assistant program director, Kyle Boham. I, along with Dan, maintain, nurture, and develop par partnerships with our affiliated hospitals and practices. 
While this year has been unique as a COVID-19 pandemic pivoted didactic learning and clinical care in hopefully ways that will better the future education of the anesthesiologist assistant. You all are to be congratulated for your resilience and your flexibility. I am in awe of all of you and the program staff who has successfully navigated the muddy waters, enabling you to complete all of your graduation requirements on time. Now it's time to honor you, the third class of graduates, class of 2020. Congratulations. Hey guys, you made it. You finally have completed this long journey you've been on over the last two plus years. And it's been truly amazing for me getting to know each and every one of you throughout that journey and watching your transformation into the anesthesia providers that you've become. So congratulations on your achievement class of 2020. I'm gonna miss every one of you guys. I thank you for choosing the Medical College of Wisconsin and for entrusting us with your education and your well-being during these challenging times. On behalf of our faculty, staff, alumni, and board of trustees, we welcome you to the new profession and eagerly anticipate your future successes, accomplishments, and contributions to the betterment of humankind. And thank you all for joining us on this very special afternoon.